Wow. Do you think this is beautiful? It looks cool, yeah. What picture do you have in your mind when you hear chemistry? Do you see this image stands for sustainability in chemistry? Let's have a look. Next page, please. What you're looking at is the world's largest chemical complex. It's based in Germany and it would cover most of Manhattan if you were to transpose it. 35,000 employees work there. 200 tightly integrated plants operate to produce a multitude of chemicals. That site operates its own hotel. It has a wine cellar, internal bus routes, and provides thousands of free bicycles for employees to reach the different locations where they have to go to. I like to think of BSF as the oldest and most successful chemical startup company in the world. 1865 is when BSF was founded. That's 156 years ago. Round about 110,000 employees work for BSF in almost all countries of the world. In Australia, by comparison, it's around about 400. So in the scheme of things, here we are tiny, um, but we are an integral part of the, of the global BSF family. We have 1,660,000 active customers. We are a B2B business. We are not talking consumers. We are not talking um, individuals like you and I who can just turn up at our gate and, and procure chemicals. This is B2B business we're talking about. On an annual basis, we submit round about 900, 950 patents that come out of our internal R&D. And we're currently working towards having 4,000 products certified with their carbon footprint. So when we take those to customers, we can tell them exactly how much carbon emissions or equivalent of uh, thereof have gone into making this product. 2 billion euros is our annual spend on R&D. Mm -hmm. All this is possible by looking at the tiny details that make our, all our objects around us work and exist. The chemistry, the chemicals. Let's have a look at the next picture, please. So Jan, just let me know you're, you're, you're pushing in the nose a little bit. I'm cutting in and out a little bit. Okay, let me let me move a little bit closer to the microphone. So hopefully you can you can hear me yeah, well. That's good. Our life and work depends on getting the small things right. It's a message I recently heard from John Engelander in his um, video on on uh, LinkedIn, and it totally resonated with me because it is the little things in life that make the big difference. BSF is mostly a bunch of nerds, you know? We find beauty and functionality in the details of molecules and business execution. I'm on that side, the business execution. I don't get to play with molecules. But when I look at a picture like this, I go, cool, man. This is stuff we're selling. This is basically the inside. What you see here is the inside of a lithium ion battery. Um, at obviously magnitude. Um, uh, so yeah, we have, we have lots of pictures like that and looking at you, wow, that's the stuff I'm selling? Incredible. Next slide, please. Our detailed understanding of the objects around us 
lead us to a plethora of better, longer lasting and less wasteful products. I want to allow you to get a little bit lost in the beautiful examples I've collected here where chemistry makes our world and lives better. I won't point out everything that's on this slide, but just to give you an overview, we have chemistry that allows us to capture CO2 from almost any source and convert it into valuable chemicals. Our scientists have also invented a shark skin inspired coating for aeroplanes that saves fuel. We are offering our customers digital guided, I would almost call it sniper style precision application of agrochemistry. We have 3D printing polymers for inventors and resource conscious makers. One of our customers makes sport, sport shoes made from ocean plastic. We also supply to our customers utility sized sodium sulfur batteries that can power Australian mines or community grids. Next slide, please. Pick your favorite problem. There's so many. I'm a pragmatic realist with a vision. Fortunately, BSF lets me and all of us tackle our vision. Next slide, please. Our mission is to create chemistry for a sustainable future. This mission cannot be achieved with the linear cradle to grave, cradle to grave way of using resources. BSF wants to make a circular economy work. Why? Because we are 110,000 ordinary people with children and a desire for a good future. And we have a way to help society, our customers and partners to do the right thing. BSF and myself, nobody can do this alone. Our way is called chemcycling and I'm going to introduce you to some of those details of what that stands for in the remaining slides. Importantly, chemcycling has a business case. Let's look at that on the next slide, please. We aim at doubling our surplus sales to reach 17 billion euros by 2030. We commit to using 250,000 metric tons of recycled feedstock by 2025. And we run a circular economy program to accelerate this transition to achieve those goals earlier. Let me break that down for you a little bit. On the first one, we will work with customers to adopt new products or established ones made with recycled chemicals. And I can tell you in Australia, this is an uphill struggle due to the lack of policy and frameworks in many cases, but also because of individual attitudes. Under normal circumstances, when Melbourne is not in lockdown, I spend a lot of my time traveling. I get to see a lot of the manufacturing sites um, in mining, for example, around Australia. And the attitude that I meet out there is staggering. People point and say, look outside, nobody there. Why should I care to clean my, my emissions further than what the current regulatory framework allows? So they're quite happy to run their plants emitting 250, 500, 700 ppm um, when we know from our own experience back in Germany, that big site that I saw you, showed you, that operates on 40 ppm of emissions for the same plant that is operated here in Australia. Where you go? Why?
the 250,000 metric tons of recycled feedstock. That is 12,000 20 foot containers. That's a 75 kilometer long train. If you just look at the number, you think, oh, that sounds easy. You know, given, given all they produce, surely they can do that. It's big because oftentimes that means new technology. It's one thing to find the plastics and the waste. It's another thing to have it all sorted and tidied up in a way so it can be industrially ingested again into a production process that turns plastic waste into pyrolysis oil, for example. But it definitely sounds amazing to have that sort of commitment. And I'm sure we will overachieve. Just change my page here. On the last one with the circular economy program, that's basically two streams of activity, internal and external education. Internal education, I can tell you, every week the drum is beating at BSF. Some of the content that I'm sharing here with you today um, I received from a presentation just last week where we talked about the circular economy, how will it work, what will we do, who does what, where are the opportunities, why is it cool to be in there, how will we sell the products, what other products do we have to invent, what chemistries do we have to invent. Internally, definitely we are on that way. The external education, of course, is a big part. I mean, one reason for me to be here is this opportunity to talk to people who don't think about chemistry all that much in your everyday lives. And we want you to, we want you to understand what's possible. So we run customer workshops, we run network presentations, we talk to policymakers, of course, and we talk to the next generation. We go into schools, we run something called Kids Lab. At the moment, you might find some posts on, on LinkedIn again. Um, we run um, little, little lab, chemical labs for a day at schools to get kids excited about what they can do with chemistry um, and how to understand chemistry and how it applies to the little things that they recognize in life to get them excited about the topic. Next slide, please. So this is a depiction of what we call chem cycling. Did I mention we are a bunch of nerds? BSF loves methods, processes, and projects. So this little innocent looking cycle that you see here BSF is paying hundreds of employees to spend their time to set this up globally. So all the regions, all the countries are working through who you're selling to, what are you selling, how you're selling, what's needed, what customer interaction do we need to understand where the local markets are going. Um, this is the logic that we see. This is how we can do it. This is how we would execute it. And then it all gets put into something that we can take around the world and talk to people about and, and articulate and explain how we're going to go about chem cycling, how we're going to take um, what's ordinarily or would have been looked at as waste has now become a raw material for BSF to remake into chemicals and sell again into, um, into our markets. I love that. I absolutely love that, Jan. And I, we're, we're nearly running out of time and we want to jump into the panel shortly, um, but I know you have finished the majority of your slides and we are going to get to discuss this a little bit more. My question, which someone has asked, which I think is very relevant, is the capability and the knowledge and the know-how that BASF have built up over all those years. And you have been doing circular economy like that, that city, that chemical town, but it's a city where the, the way you have built that in that circular design and you're taking waste to create another product somewhere else. So all this capability and innovation, the largest startup in the world, how, tell me, how can startups 
and industry and researchers and government here in Australia take advantage of this immense capability? Um, there's only one way, communication, of course. Um, yep. Our doors are open, our telephone lines are, are available, our people are ready to, to talk about um, the various technologies that, 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 that are of interest here for the, for the, for the uh, people we have in Australia. Mm. Um, communication is the key. We need to hear, we need to know what people are interested in. Um, we are very happy to connect um, our stakeholders and our partners here in Australia with the research centers, with the uh, um, customer exploration centers, innovation centers, um, to, to get access to what we do, what we think, what we've tried, what works, what we know, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, ideas how Brilliant. to scale up something. Um, communication is the key. Brilliant.